Hello, and thank you for joining me. Uh, it's been a little while, so I thought it was time to uh, give you a bit of an update on what's been going on on my painting table. So uh, I'll turn the camera around and then I'll talk you through what uh, has been completed. These are the first units I'll show you. Three battalions of Swedes from the Seven Years War. Um, I haven't painted these recently. These were actually painted way back in the 1990s, but I've been rebasing them. Uh, it's a job I don't like, um, but they were on fiddly small bases that were all the rage at the time. So I put them on slightly bigger bases, 24 millimeters by 30, which means they're easier to move around on the table. I should put these on the turntable and show you what they look like. So here are the three Swedish battalions. It's the 1st and 2nd Battalion from the Södermanlands Regiment and the 1st Battalion from the Alvsborg Battalion. The 1st Battalion have the white flags and the 2nd Battalions have a, in this case, a yellow flag. Um, the Swedish infantry uniforms were all the same. They were fairly old cut uh, and uh, had a blue coat and yellow facings. Um, the figures here are Freikor, old Freikor, and while they're nice, uh, they're, they're quite tall for 15 millimeters. Uh, they measure sort of 18 millimeters uh, from the feet to the hat, um, and they're well well sculpted. Um, they suffered from two things, a limited number of poses um, and the metal used was very brittle. And in the rebasing pro uh, program, uh, I lost three of them uh, when they snapped at the ankles, um, which is very frustrating. I have enough figures now that I would have to paint uh, because they're still bare lead to add a further three battalions of line infantry and one battalion of composite grenadiers uh, and I'll have to work out if I'm going to do that next or if I'm going to leave that for a later date. Um, when I'd originally started the project I only completed one regiment of cavalry but I've added two more regiments to this, well in fact four squadrons, a squadron is uh, two bases, four figures. Um, here are the three, uh, well, three units. Um, what we have here are four units of the Smarlands Regiment and uh, two units of the Uplands Liv Regiment. Um, Swedish horse uh, had the blue coat, um, but they did have differences in their turnbacks and distinctions. So you can see that uh, Smarland here have yellow facings and the Uplands Liv Regiment have white facings. Um, there are also regiments that had red facings and some that had straw facings. Uh, I have one more unit I can add, um, which will probably be a further Sort of uh, component from the Uplands Liv Regiment. Um, this also illustrates another one of the issues with the Freikorps figures. Uh, I've already mentioned the limited number of poses and that's obvious here, but if we turn this round again and I show you on the back, um, these figures have a carbine slung um, and the metal is so brittle that if they get bent, you can't straighten them out again without snapping them, which is very unusual for metal. But you'll see, if you look closely here, that an awful lot of the carbines are truncated, like shorn off shot shotguns, sawn off shotguns. Um, very disappointing. Uh, I believe these figures are still available and they've changed the metal to make it more uh, forgiving 
Um, and if that was the case, then that would be a great improvement. Uh, just a quick note about the Swedish involvement in the Seven Years' War. They didn't take a prominent role, uh, although they were in the war from quite early on through to the end. Um, the Swedish territory included a little bit of the North German coast, Western Pomerania. Um, the remnants of what had been quite an extensive Baltic Sea Empire. Uh, and during the course of the Seven Years' War, there were a few engagements with the Prussians, uh, but nothing that kind of rose to the level of a full battle. Um, and most of the time, it was skirmishes or little raids or uh, expeditions that honours went mostly to the Prussians with the occasional Swedish success. Um, but nevertheless, an interesting additional force from that period of, the, of history. And finally, we have the additions to my 6mm French army from the War of the Spanish Succession. Uh, here we have four artillery pieces. Uh, lovely little models. The, uh, the cannon come as single piece, so you don't have to fit the wheels to small axles, and you don't have to fit the barrels into tiny trunnions. Um, very nice. Easy to do, quick to paint up, and uh, I think they look quite effective. Right, here we have two units of Chevalier and one unit of Dragoons. Um, Out of the army pack I bought from Bacchus at Partizan, I only now have one unit of Dragoons to finish and the commanding officers. Um, so that will be quite a success for me. Sort of uh, bought, painted and based uh, inside, uh, what's it going to be, about three months? Um, generally speaking, I found the, the figures very nice, very clean, easy to paint. But I have to say that with the Dragoons I've had a little bit more trouble. There's been some flash between the legs of the horses and uh, at least one of the uh, horses was badly miscast. So a little disappointed there. Um, although on the whole I still think they are great figures. Um, I have ordered some more. Uh, but the website says that it's going to take three weeks for them to be processed. Um, so this little project will go on uh, the back burner for a while and I have to decide what I'm going to put on the table next. Um, a lot of choices, a lot of things to think about. <laughs>